hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm very excited because this shoe actually turned out very nice and today i'm going to be showing you how i made this shoe from scratch i only ended up spending like 400 naira to make this shoe so it's very cheap you wouldn't even believe it okay so continue watching if you like to see how so I'll be using my size 2 hook for this project and I'm using my green yarn. I'm trying to make my Tinkerbell shoe. It's a nice ballerina shoe. So first of all, I'm going to use my thread and needle to stitch the sole down to the um, flip flop so that I use the support, the woolen sole that I made. If you like to see how I made the sew. I wanted to make this video as short as possible, so I made the sew in a different video. I'll leave the link in the description box below, so you go check that out. How to make the sew for flat shoes of any type? I have it down in the description box. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to stitch this with needle, and I put the yarn in a needle, and I'm trying to use that to stitch this um sole down so that it will last longer for me this shoe is not actually very professional but it will serve a purpose okay i wanted a ballerina flat shoe that i'll use for my cosplay and photo shoot for my birthday in which i will update the video here so don't forget to subscribe so that you will see the video of me being Tinkerbell, you know. <laughs> yeah, I call myself Tinkerbell because I do lots of stuff. I pick up stuff, stuff that you're supposed to throw away. I use them. So right here, this is what I'm doing. I'm not stitching and um, everything that. I, rather, I'm stitching in between the two stitches so that I will only be having um, the down stitches pressed down, down. Okay. So in between the stitches is what I'm stitching. So in that way, you will still have the upper part of the stitch still um, hanging after that. We will use that to do the crocheting. So I'm stitching into the lower part of the um, of the stitch. Okay, I don't know if you understand that. When you're knitting, you have um, a double stitch. So in this case, I'm pressing down one with, um, so I'm pressing down one to the flip flop so and I'm going to stitch down all the way around to the end and once I get to the end I still have that loose yarn that I used to start the stitching I'm going to tie that down firmly and knot it two to three times firmly then I'll cut off the hanging out yarns and after that we are very much ready to start our shoe knitting proper okay so I use my hook as I said before, I'm going to be knitting to the upper part of the stitch now, which is halfway stitch knitting. Okay, so I'm going to attach my yarn. If you're having problems with um, all the turns or you need to hit knitting, I'll leave the link of um, um, basic knitting techniques in my description box below. So you will also go check that out so that you'll find it much easier because this video i promise you is not a beginner friendly video so if you don't know nothing about stitching i will advise you go check that video out okay so now i'm going to be doing double crochets into the upper part of the stitch so i'll be doing double crochet into each i'm not skipping any one each stitch is going to have a double crochet um, made into it so i'm going to do that all the way around the shoe okay and that will be my first round of the shoe making so once i'm done with that i'm going to show you how i will continue with the second um, I'll continue with the second round now. Okay, 
okay now so i've done it all around i'm at the last stitch of the first round so i just wanted to show you how i will join and close it up so i'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the first round and that will close up the work next i'm going to be using this very pattern i call it towel kind of pattern it kind of make your work looks thicker and padded i use that for my bikini in which i'll leave the link in the description box so if you like to see how i made that bikini you can go ahead and check the video out so here i'm going to in that video i think is more clear my lighting here was very bad so i'm very sorry about that but if you just follow up in some points it shows more clearly i'm really sorry about that guys so i will be doing forward and backward stitch into the bone of the stitches not the stitches itself you go check the basic knitting technique and you'll understand what i'm saying better so i did that all the way round back to the heels and i'll also um, slip stitch into the very first stitch of the last round okay and that's the end of the second round so i'm going to slip stitch into that and next i'm going to go ahead and start doing the third round but in this case i'm not going to keep the stretch straight for the body it's only at the front at the toes that i will be leaving the straight stripe so i'm going to scatter my stripe and what i mean by that is that instead of stitching into the first uh, into the front stitch if it was a front stitch i will stitch into it backwardly and into the backward stitch i will stitch into it and through the front i'll show you more clearly when i get to where um, the video looks more clearer but that's exactly what i'm doing now because i wanted to scatter the um the stripes i'll only leave that at the front that's the design i was going for so i'm going to continue doing that till i get to the toes and i'll show you how i maintain the stripe Okay, at the front, you are going to be stitching front into the front stitch and back into the backward stitch, okay? So if you have um, the stitch that you were blessing backwardly, you are going to stitch into it backwardly. And the one that you stitch to the front, you are going to stitch it into the front. That's where you are going to maintain the pattern and you will have that stripe on the front part of the shoe and i'm going to be doing 24 stitches of that because i wanted 12 stripes on the front okay if you do 24 stitches 12 will be the backward and 12 will be the forward stitch so there you'll be having um 12 stripes on the front of the shoe so i'm going to do that and when once i'm done with the 24 stitches i'll go ahead and continue scattering the other part of the shoe till I get to the heels again and that's pretty much what I'll do so now you see the 12 stripes I'm talking about sorry my camera is very terrible this this evening so I'm going to go ahead and start okay it's more clearer now let me show you what I'm doing okay this is supposed to be the front stitch instead of stitching into it frontly i'm going to stitch into it backwardly and the next one was supposed to be the backward stitch i'm going to be stitching into it forwardly and that's exactly what i'm doing okay you stitch to the back stitch um, forwardly you stitch to the forward stitch Backwardly, in that way you will scatter the stripes. It won't be um, strap as used to. For instance, here I was supposed to stitch in backwardly. No, I wouldn't do that. I will now stitch into it forwardly. Okay, and that's pretty much about it. So that's how to scatter the pattern. So I'll go ahead and do this. Get to the heels, and when once I get to the heels, I will slip stitch into the first stitch of the last round 
moment I get to the end of stitch and I will slip stitch into the uh, first stitch of the last round then I'll go ahead and do this two more rows then I'll come back and show you exactly uh, what I'm doing so go ahead and be doing the same thing for two more rows okay so now we have um, two more rows after that and that's a total of um, five rows so next I'm going to do chain three then I'll continue doing the same thing but why I what I want to show you here is that I'm going to start reducing it at the front okay because I want the shoe front to come up nicely so I'll start reducing the stripe at the front making it to come together so that I will have the front of the shoe having a close up so now I'm at the front for this very first time of reducing I'm going to um, reduce at the foot stripe in the front I'm counting the front stripe so once you've done three front stripe at the foot stripe you will reduce and I'll show you how to reduce okay so once you've done three stripes and at the foot stripe you will not stitch into the back stitch okay one two three so we make three and at the foot stripe you will not stitch into the back stitch rather you're going to now we've had four so the foot one the fifth one now we will skip the back stitch and we are stitching into the next front stripe stitch and in that way we are going to reduce the work okay so you skip that and that is out of the way so whenever i'm talking of reducing that is exactly what i'm talking about you skip one back stripe and you stitch into the next front stripe so i reduce that i'm going to make one more stitch and on the next i'll reduce again and i'll make two more stitches then i reduce again then i continue doing the work i'm going to reduce it three times for the first work okay so when i'm done reducing at the front i'm going to continue stitching it all the way back i said i'll reduce then i'll stitch one more then i'll reduce then i'll stitch two more and i'll reduce again and from there i'll continue this normal stitching scratching the pattern for the body down back to the heels and when once i get to the heels i will join the work again by slip stitching into the first stitch of the last row and i'll continue doing the same thing back to the front where i'll show you how i'll reduce So now I'm back on the toes this time around I'm going to reduce it um, three times again so I'll stitch um, to the first 
this thread then I'll reduce I'll stitch um, three straps again and I'll reduce then I'll stitch another two three straps then I'll reduce then I'll continue doing the work so I'm going to reduce three times again I'll stitch to the first two. I'm counting only the front strap here. So when you stitch into the first, normally into the first two straps, the next thing you um, you will reduce. Then you stitch into three straps again. You reduce. You stitch normally into another three straps. You reduce again, and then you continue doing. Uh, you work normally till you get to the heels again okay so it's actually very simple if you just follow the instruction you will end up having exactly what i had except you want something different for your own you can actually create your own ideas from mine and probably get something a bit different but if you follow exactly what i'm saying you're going to have exactly what I made okay so right now I will stitch and once I'm done with that I'm going to go ahead and stitch back to the heels okay So you're going to stitch it down to the heels once you're done with the front and when you get to the heel you close it up and start a new round in this round we are going to do something slightly different at the front so just go ahead and be doing the same thing to the body scattering the pattern in any direction you like however you like your pattern to scatter you can do that i don't need to tell you how to do that okay but i also and reduce the heel at this point if you saw that I reduce the heel once at this point so once I get to the front I'm going to mark where I would like to reverse this work I want to reverse the front so that it will cover my toes properly so I need that copying that will cover my so I'm going to re reverse the work so I will also reduce here three times and once I reduce three times I'll get to the other corner here I will reduce after two stitch I reduce after three stitch I reduce them after two stitches again I'll reduce and I'll get to the other corner um, of it um, I made about um, 24 or 25 stitches i didn't actually i'm not really good with counting so i didn't really count but you can place it um and put your toes into it and mark where your uh, little toes stop so that's where you um, need to um, stop the work and reverse okay so once you put your toes you mark where your little toes and um, will be well covered you need your little toes to be covered so you mark it that's where you reverse the work so once i get to that point i will reverse the work and walk back in opposite direction so at this point i'm going to chain three turn the work and walk back in the opposite direction okay so I was supposed to walk forward to the heels but here I'm turning back because I need um, more coverage for the toes so I'm walking back to um, the other side where I started the, um, the increase for the coverage for the toes so here I'm not going to reduce anything I'm just going to go ahead and do the normal stitches closing up um, the ones that I've reduced already point to note when you reduce the work once you get back to where you reduce that two 
stitches is going to be joined as one so you're not stitching them um, differently you're going to stitch two of them together and they will form one front stitch okay probably i don't know if you understand that but that's just how it works if you go ahead stitching them into two it will not come out right okay so i'm going to go ahead and stitch this all the way back to where i started it and then once i get there i'll chain three again and turn the work and walk back so i could continue walking down to the heels okay so i chain three turn the work and i'm walking back to um, where i stop and reverse so i'll walk back and when i get there i'm going to slow down and walk my way down to the hill then this time around i'm going to only reduce it twice and that twice will be at the middle of the shoe okay i'll walk like halfway up then i'll reduce um then walk one stitch reduce again then continue down to where i reverse the work and then once i get there i will slip down and walk back down to the heels and that's just it so i walk back down to the heel i'm very sorry about my camera today i don't know what happened it's kind of blurry it was not really um visible I'm really sorry but that's the instruction I'm giving is exactly what you will follow so once I'm at the um, end of where I slip the, of where I reverse I'm going to slip down and walk my way back to the heels of the shoe okay so you can now see the cup has formed already and the coverage is coming right up so i'm going to walk back to the heels and once i get to the heels i'm going to close up the work and i'm also going to reduce the heels again once because you want it hooking to your heels when you're wearing it so after that i will walk my way all the way around and this time around i'm not reducing anything and that will be my last round okay I only reduce once at the toes and after that I'm going to be walking all the way around back to the heels and then once I get back to the heels I'll close up the walk and that's my shoe is ready mm -hmm. so you just walk back to the heel and that's it my shoe is ready I'm back at the heel now I'm going to slip stitch and close up the work and chain one cut off my yarn then i'll pull it out and knot it and my shoe is ready so one last detail i'm going to be attaching my pom-poms so if you like to see how i made these fluffy pom-poms i'll leave the link in the description box below so my Tinderbell shoe is pretty much ready so I'm going to use my hot glue to attach the pom poms to the shoe be careful here or you get yourself burned so I attached it hold it up for it to stick and that was pretty much about it so thank you so much guys for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video give me a thumbs up thank you so much guys so you trim up any yarns that is hanging out and that's so much about it until next time guys bye